I'll, I'll just throw a little story in there. Um, yeah, well, we'd uh, the Air Force, you know what, out of uh, um, Milton Hole Lake and Heath, they had uh, F-15Es. Now, a lot of these guys were ex F-111 pilots, um, and they 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 needed to, but we wanted some, you know, dissimilar dogfighting. So I I talked to them, and they said they only wanted to see, you know, two planes. And I said, okay, and they were a little cocky, you know, they're flying their new little F-15Es. I'm like, okay. <laughs> So uh, I decided I'd only show them two. So we came out and we met out in the uh, the uh, uh, the rain over the wash, you know, ATA out there. And, you know, and I said, well, here's the deal. What we'll do is we'll play fair as long as they're doing their job correctly. Now, the one thing the tornado had that was very superior to the Tomcat was its raw gear. That's the radar warning. So you could tell who was looking at you and you knew where they were. And very effective. Mm -hmm. So we came in and we came in, a, you know, in a flight of four. And they said, as soon as they light us up, meaning the, you know, their radar sees us, what we're going to do is we're going to notch in just horizontal notch, which means they're going to, you know, then they'll, they'll have to split their radars. Okay. And we'll notch out. And if they drop one of us, I want that, that uh, a pair to split now to do a, a champagne, one to go high and one to go low. So we notch out and we start to go away. They drop us. We both notch. Now we have the turn. Once we're naked, meaning they weren't showing us on the rod gear, we turn back in. So now there's four of us at varying altitudes, about 20,000 feet separating, about five miles of being, mm. six miles of being, 10 miles of being, somewhere you know in that region. And we come in, and and of course they they weren't using their their radars the way they were supposed to, and they really got torn apart. I mean, they I don't think they saw any tornadoes in the end. So uh, you know, except behind them when we got gun footage. Um, you know, it's uh, um, so, yeah, maybe they learned a little humility there, you know, and that's where it comes yeah. down to, you know, um, who's in the jet and how do you fly it? You know what I'm saying? Um, you're flying a Tomcat and you you leave a, a Cessna 172 alone that has a missile on it. You're going to get shot. You know, it's you know, we came again, you know, fighting against MiG-21s with unimproved atolls, which is, you know, a piss poor plane with a really bad missile. But, you know, something if you don't see them, there you're you done. Yeah. You know. So when you used to go up and fight uh, in the F3 against, you know, the F-15s and whatever you, you else um, you went up against, would you be clean or would you have tanks on as well? Um, it all depended. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we'd have tanks because you really needed the fuel, you know, um, and it did slow you down. You know, obviously every jet, when you put tanks on it, really degrades the performance <laughs> for the most part. Unless the bigger the jet and the more thrust the weight, the less you notice it. Like in the F-14 Really, in the Bs, we didn't really gain much performance at all with our tanks off. Because mm -hmm. you had so much thrust to weight and you had a lifting body underneath the, the plane. You know, the body itself acts as a wing. So it really didn't, we just didn't see that much from the drag. Did you feel like you had to work a bit harder in the F3 to get the most from the jet? Yeah, it was well, definitely with the manual wings. It was not as user-friendly as the Tomcat, you know, in that aspect. Um, and besides, a little more thrust to weight, especially in the Bs, you can make up for a lot of things. You know, thrust to weight is, you know, speed is life, well, thrust is life. You know, it gets you there. So, no, definitely. Um, you know, and, you know, also I was working in a different system. We, when we came there, they were transitioning um, one of the, uh, um, their, their fighter weapons guys had gone over to the U.S. And they were incorporating, you know, basically they were going from a, a rear tech scenario, kind of a World War II type scenario, to target aspect, which is really the modern, you know, uh, um, features of, of air combat, you know, how you intercept and do stuff like that. That's what the missile looks at. And, you know, he looks at the target aspect to see if it can get there instead of uh, displacement angles and stuff like that, you know, putting yourself a certain distance from the, the jet. So um, we were in a transition period right then. So, um, you know, in, in that aspect, you know, it was a, there was a little bit of a, uh, getting used to the different, you know, techniques they were, because we were still using, you know, the, the attack, re-attack, you know, with the, you know, figuring out displacement and, and distance from the aircraft. So uh, that was a little different, you know, because it was, I mean, that was a little, like I said, a little more World War II tactics, you know, attacking a big bomber squadron or something like that instead of a, a fighter. 